So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Boyan, and I'm a JavaScript lead at Melon, and I have the honor to break the ice and open the presentation for this uh, series, of, for this conference. I ha I'm happy that we are leaving the pandemic behind and have the opportunity uh, together and have such live events. So uh, this will be the presentation that I will speak on. So you can find me uh, on my, some of these social profiles and on GitHub. As we all heard, JavaScript is single-threaded, and this is not correct. So we just been learning this as a statement. So uh, we can offload work on background threads on JavaScript, and these are called web workers. So even uh, a single wor worker can give uh, the main thread a much breathing room and uh, can like uh, make uh, the JavaScript more performant. So uh, web workers are under yeah. Web workers are underutilized because they are frustrating to manage. Uh, uh, this is uh, because uh, the web workers API is, is a lot uh, complicated. It's not like normal functions that are called. So everything is done through messaging. So let's see some image here. So we have the main JavaScript uh, thread that we all know where most of the code is uh, executed. And if we instantiate a worker, uh, uh, all of the communication here uh, goes through messaging. So a worker can listen events, can process some code, and also send the result to the main script. But it cannot like invoke some function and immediately return the result. So we have to push messages back and forward. That's why it was uh, hard to work with web workers. So on this image, uh, I will show you more about the API. So on the main thread, we create a new instance for, for a worker. And we can post a message to the worker thread. On the worker thread, we can also hear messages, listen on message, on events, and post messages back to the main thread. And <coughs> at the end, we can terminate the work. Uh, here, I will show you one uh, vanilla example uh, without a library, how we can use workers. So we create a separate JavaScript file uh, for the worker code that will be invoked and that will be executed on uh, the worker. So this is now the main JavaScript thread where we instantiate a new worker. And this is a simple example where we are just uh, uh, every second, iterating a count by one, and we will post messages to uh, the worker thread. So uh, this is the post message that I'm talk, talking about. You, you, you are not expecting a result, you are just sending messages and fire, firing and forgetting. So we are sending this object with action name because we would like uh, to have multiple different functions or APIs on the worker that we will uh, execute. So uh, this uh, that now you're seeing is a part of the worker JS code. So there the, the global is not the window but itself. And as I said, you are listening for message, so for any named message. So we are now listening the message and uh, distracting some properties, the data that we are receiving from the main thread. And uh, you, you can see how now this evolves. We create a switch statement and uh, just switch case by types of action and take the payload, calculate something, probably uh, not this simple, but something more complex. And uh, you can post the message back to the main thread. But this is like one directional. You're, you're just sending it back, and this is all asynchronous. Uh, you, you, you need to re, uh, receive the message, listen to message on the matrix. And when you start to expand on this and use a lot of APIs, this can 
become more and more complex. So uh, let's see the, continue with the example. Now on the main thread, you are receiving the message from that, uh, the result that was calculated on the worker thread. So you can see how this is becoming more messier because you will have a lot of APIs, a lot of switch cases and messaging back and forward. And it's not like a normal function call that returns a promise that you can await or something as you can use, but you have to even uh, like error manage this and yeah. So for everything that you will call on the worker, you have to call another message, uh, await a message with some other name as a result. You cannot immediately uh, accept the result. So, uh, topic of this talk was, yeah, a library that will help us with this. Uh, it's an open source library, a very small library in size, uh, and it's made from Google. And uh, it wraps this uh, messaging like around uh, proxies, and it's a pro remote procedure call, so uh, for us it will look like just some asynchronous APIs. The idea is to make wor web workers enjoyable. Uh, you can think of it that it does this, all of this mapping between these messages behind the scenes, and for us we are just calling some function. So I will show you one uh, example now with uh, just uh, with comlink a simple example that's uh, just like javascript it's not something in react or webpack you can use this library everywhere and then i will continue with a more real demo uh, that will involve more like uh, type uh, typescript react integration and uh, all done through webpack yeah so if you're just normal JavaScript. Uh, the first box is a code for, from the worker code. So in workers, you import code with import scripts. And this is just the Comlink library. Uh, and you can see this just an object with some function that doubles the value. Uh, Comlink is, uh, uh, th there is not a lot of APIs in Comlink. So uh, what you do on the worker, you are just exposing the service object, this one, or whatever you want, and uh, uh, you're telling itself that's the global this of the worker. When the worker will be initialized, where should it expose? So it's, you should expose this service through the worker. So the second box is the main JavaScript thread, so where we will instantiate this worker. So we are creating a new instance of the worker, so what do we do on the client side, on the main thread? We are just creating a comlink proxy through the worker. And uh, what is important now, everything that even is not returning a promise on, um, on the worker side, everything is now asynchronous. And all of this is done automatically by comlink. So you have to await every result. But this is the magic that comlink does. You, you don't need to create a, pay, uh, a payload or uh, action or even a, a send an action as a message return. So this will all be done with the mapping behind the scenes from Comlink. E even error management, it will throw an error for you if uh, you throw an error from the worker side. So this is uh, same example as previous, but done with Comlink. So you can see how this uh, uh, becomes easier now to use. We will now switch uh, to a demo. Yeah. yeah, I will show you now a demo for this. So uh, later in the presentation, I will send you, I will show you the links and all of you can experience this demo or see the source code on GitHub. So um, what uh, does this demo represent and what is uh, its parts? So, um, on the left side, we see uh, some graphics being drawn and calculated uh, from very expensive operations. So, um, it's a fractal, it's a Julia fractal, but it also uses uh, uh, a blurring algorithms like Gaussian blur 
and some uh, edge detection uh, that's very slow algorithm. So if you do all of this on the main JavaScript thread, like it's now normal without workers, uh, you will experience uh, stuttering, jittery, and uh, everything will be low frames per second, so the performance will be bad. So if, if you do it like this, and you calculate expensive things here, if you try to drag something, the, the user will uh, not be able to drag nicely because uh, at the UI, the JavaScript is busy calculating other things. So um, you can see here, the frames per second, like five frames per second for the UI and for the calculated graphics. So uh, if we switch to a worker thread, so now uh, you can freely drag this because the UI uh, now on this screen goes like to 120 uh, frames per second. And the fractal is still slow in calculating, but we are not experiencing slowing uh, with interaction with the page. So this is a better user experience. So uh, we, we shouldn't calculate or uh, do expensive things on the main JavaScript thread. That one should be free for user interaction and events and painting or UI libraries. So um, another more real example is if we have a long run running operation with some input value and uh, it takes some time to calculate. Uh, this is done on a worker, but the UA is free to do something else. And it's even reporting and, and notifying us with uh, the percentage done of the result. And when it finishes, it will show, you, show us the final result. So these are the parts of the demo. And the main take is that uh, if you are not uh, calculating some things on worker, uh, it will be slow. So, yeah, this is the more more important take. Uh, okay, uh, I want to show you now uh, more uh, code for this. We have some code that uh, calculates this. That's not that important, but. It takes some time, these algorithms. So uh, what we need to show here is um, this worker server file. That's, this, is, uh, this will be on the worker side. We just need to create some class and some uh, functions that will cal uh, calculate things and then use the communic expose function to expose this worker class. So this uh, first function calculate, it just takes some option to, to calculate the drawing, the, the fractal. And this is more, this second function is uh, the operation that I showed you with the calculations. And this is more real world example when you have some parameters, but what's important here is that uh, the worker thread can call the main thread and notify uh, the main thread. This is what we are using to notify the status, but also can even call a callback that returns some value or some, some, some number, whatever. So uh, even the worker can call functions and use uh, the main thread, not just the main thread to call the worker, but you are able to pass a callbacks uh, like an API to the worker, so worker can use some things that you, you will need from the main thread. So workers uh, have limitations, like uh, they don't have some security access like to local storage and some things like that. So you, you want to use them like this, like give some APIs to the worker, or you can just use it for normal things like uh, reporting progress on some calculation. So the main thing here is exposing the API from Comlink. On the client side, on the main thread, on the worker, this uh, demo is now with uh, uh, React 18 and Webpack 5. And in Webpack 5, we have control over workers. So you will see the code. We are instantiating this worker. We are creating a proxy to the worker. And we are just 
calling the functions and everything is asynchronous here. So maybe one important thing is even uh, uh, instantiating of the worker is done in a synchronous way. So you have even await the new uh, instance of the work. So to, to use it from React, uh, uh, we here, let me show you an uh, example with the expensive operation. So uh, we have uh, this uh, custom hook here, use worker. We are just creating that worker. And after that, uh, the, mo the most important thing here is this. So uh, we can call an expensive operation from the worker, pass some parameters. And what's important here is uh, when you pass callbacks to comlink to the worker, you have to wrap them like, not like a normal functions, but through comlink proxies. So comlink will know and will be able to uh, evoke these callbacks and uh, do all of its magic. And uh, because everything is synchronous, even the final result, you can await here. So yeah, so what's important? also to remember that uh, you must send just uh, clonable values to the worker. So it's just like the structure clone or uh, think of it is like when you're sending to a server like a JSON API. So you cannot send normal functions or something that's not clonable. Um, okay. So yeah, as I showed you, uh, if you use React, um, there were some big changes between React 17 and 18. And React 18 with the new scripts introduced uh, Webpack 5. So even if you are not working with Webpack 5, uh, or even if you are not working with React, uh, and, but you use Webpack, with Webpack 5 you have control over uh, the workers. Previously, uh, 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 in Webpack 4, there was other way to expose it, maybe even simpler, but now you have more control over it. So now we are just uh, wrapping, uh, instantiating the worker ourselves and creating a proxy and just calling the functions. Previously, there was one uh, part of Comlink, Comlink Loader, uh, another small dependency that did this without uh, manual control over the workers. So this was like a, a part of Webpack, uh, a plugin to load uh, workers. So it did them like with this special syntax and it know uh, to split them in a separate module. So Webpack 4 did this in another way and there are some differences, but I will I'll leave the code for you on GitHub and you can experiment with it. And I have tagged you even two releases, one with Webpack 4, one with Webpack 5. If you want to see the difference between React uh, uh, 17 and 18, yeah. The main thread should always be free for user interactions and animations because the user always wants to, to have a better user experience, yeah. Uh, and uh, we should not uh, calculate heavy things uh, or uh, uh, on the main thread, and we should always offload them in the background or even better on the server. So yeah, you can find uh, the demo and this URL uh, or in the source, source code on my GitHub page. So um, even if you remember this GitHub page, you can find uh, the demo URL on the GitHub page. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh.